Hi, we're here today with uh, 2020 Grammy nominee Susan Naruki, who is nominated in the Best Classical Vocal category mm -hmm. for her album The Edge of Silence, featuring music by the great Hungarian composer Yuri Kortage. And um, the music uh, is unique, which is an odious word, but it is in the it comprises pieces that can go from literally being only a few seconds long mm -hmm. to being minutes long and has an incredible intensity. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what drew you to this music? Well, I am drawn to music that fuses poetry and music together um, in inventive ways. And to say that Kortog's music does that is the understatement of the year. This is a person who literally provides a range of emotional expression, a range of musical expression, really driven by the meaning of the poets, uh, the meaning of the poetry, the emotional expression of the different poets that he sets. And so, um, so for me, it's, it's a beautiful adventure. Uh, it's an adventure of intensity of experience. And as a musician, to sing the words and the music of someone who understands every single thing he is asking his performers to do, from the vocalist to the instrumentalist. Um, there is not one extra thing in this music. It is all toward uh, a very focused, intense emotional expression, and it unfolds beautifully and um, in very surprising ways. You first performed uh his music and met him, I believe, at the Ojai Festival mm -hmm. in 1986. Right. Um, did you have an immediate connection? Well, at that, that time, that was uh, Mr. Kortog's second trip to the United States. You see that I, as I remember him, I still call him Mr. Kortog in my memory, even though I've worked with him many, many times since, since that uh, occasion over 30 years ago. Um, at that time, he did not speak English well, so we had to converse in French. And so all the directions that he was giving to me, a very young soprano at that time, untried and untested, uh, performing a very important work of his in an important place, had to be translated um, through the French language, which I understood and he understood. And so this, um, you know, it was, it was at times awkward, at times funny, but what I found so endearing about him was that he was completely sincere, intense, human, demanding, but extremely kind at the same time. And, and he was and is the kind of person who, you know, it's, it's not surprising that he writes the type of music that he does. And was it a year later that he went to Budapest to continue collaborating? Yes, actually, at the end of that weekend, uh, at the end of the Ojai weekend, he was um, pleased with what I had done, and he presented me with a stack of scores. And that box that I carried in today has that stack of scores and some that I've collected since then, a stack of scores like this, that of pieces that he had written for voice. And um, I started looking through them, and there was one in particular that really captured my imagination. It was the Attila Yosha fragments for soprano, unaccompanied soprano. And I decided to, um, to find out how I could travel to Hungary, which I did that next year, to work with him on that piece. And he was very gracious in giving me lots of time to do that. Yeah. That was in 1987. Yes. Mm -hmm. You recorded your Grammy nominated album in 2018. Is it fair to say the album was more than 30 years in the making? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is a music um, that has really defined a lot of my journey as a, as a vocalist and as a musician. This music, the music of Kortag has taught me how to think about music. Um, and what do I mean by that? In working with Kortag, 
he impressed upon me that all music is born of spontaneity. It's asymmetrical. It should be born of passion and uh, executed without fear. And I think that much of my work as a musician, not only with his music, but in other works that I've done, other paths that I've taken as a musician, has been because of, of what I've learned from him. And his music reminds me, uh, it demands that of, of its interpreters, and I, I like that. On the album, you sing in German, Hungarian, and Russian. Uh, are they equals to you? Do you, because it would seem to me linguistically they're, mm -hmm. they're different from each other. Is one easier, one more difficult? Well, um, I have more fluency in speaking German, but I have sung quite a bit in Russian, Hungarian, and German in all those languages. And as singers, we learn to execute the pronunciation of all languages that we sing with, with expertise. I would also say that I've studied those languages somewhat, and uh, it's my job to know the meaning of every single word that I sing, no matter what the language is, and I, I take the time to do that. And uh, you know why? Because it, it actually it fuels my imagination as a performer in the moment. Um. The Grammy Awards um, have happily um, are dominated um, by women artists. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you know maybe more so than any year before. Mm -hmm. That doesn't guarantee that they'll all win, but in terms of the <laughs> overall number of nominations, it's, it's pretty impressive. So uh, Lizzo, Billie Eilish, mm -hmm. Ariana Grande, mm -hmm. Susan Navarro. Yes. <laughs> For your specialized type of music, which I guess falls under the contemporary classical music mm -hmm. banner, which is a very broad mm -hmm. banner, um, what does that kind of Grammy recognition mean? And the fact is that you have been nominated three times before. Mm -hmm. Well, I I would say that um, in my in my category, which is uh, classical vocalists, you see a, a broader range of representation now than in years prior. Um, there is more modern music being included in the nominations, there's early music, and then there are people who are also really distinguished artists doing uh, traditional operatic repertoire. Um, I think that uh, personally it's very gratifying to have had a career of over 30 years and to uh, be recognized in this way for, for music that means so much to me that I've uh, performed for so many years. But I would also say that the Academy is starting to uh, widen its scope and include a broader range of voices uh, in, in many categories, and I think that that's a great thing. Uh, will you be attending the Grammy Awards? Yes, I will. <laughs> yes, I will, I will be going. It's in, uh, in Los Angeles at the end of the month, and um, yes, my husband and I are going with some friends, and, and uh, it will be a wonderful evening no matter what the outcome. And you've attended at least one time before in New York in 2002, I believe? Yes. What do you remember of that? Story? Well, yes, that was um, not after, not long after 9-11, so everyone was, um, it was a very special thing to, to have a gathering in New York City. That was great. Um, I took my mother um, because I wanted to. <laughs> she, she, uh, uh, she was a great supporter of mine, and uh, we had an absolutely terrific time. Um, yeah, it's it's really interesting to see so many artists from different genres come together on one night, and to come into a room afterward because you know that's the after party is the is the one place where all nominees wear their medal and walk around the room and say, "What'd you get yours for?" <laughs> it's really, it's just so wonderful to see so many musicians from different genres come together in one place and, and celebrate the fact that, you know, this is a wonderful thing to, to do with your life and a wonderful thing to, to give to the world. And it's, it's just really a special night. Would that have been two nights? Because wasn't there a Grammy nominee party the night before? There was, but I didn't go to that. Oh, okay. so that in that, in that time. But I am going this time around, so, yeah. Exciting. Um, yeah. You have a concert coming up at UCSD. When and where will that be? I, you leave? Yes. Uh, yes, I have a, a recital on uh, February 5th 
as part of the Wednesdays at 7 series at UC San Diego in the Conrad Prebys uh, Concert Hall. And it will be a recital of music that I love with people that are close to me who have been, in some cases, collaborators for many years. Um, in one case, a vocalist of, uh, who graduated from our program last year. It's a range of repertoire from John Dowland to Kaya Sariaho with a beautiful song cycle by Francis Poulenc as well. And the, the theme of the, the recital really is that, that turning edge of winter to spring, that edge of light that, that uh, can really signal hope in a, in a person's life or for all of us. And I think the music is, is music that I find very special and, and restorative and um, yeah, it's a celebration of the of the human voice. So I hope people will come. Come, complete the following sentence. Life without music would be. Oh, <laughs> no life at all. <laughs> nope. And it's true. 